All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you another video. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you all so much for joining me here today in this video. Bitcoin charging through, breaking to new all-time highs. We saw the price of Bitcoin at 25,000 on the 25th of December of 2020. Taking a look at the overall market, as well as some news for Cardano, how IOHK will put developers in charge of oracles. Also, with what we're seeing in terms of regulations, lack of stablecoin regulations could be dangerous, according to Charles Hoskinson. So taking a look at all of that here in this video, as well as the charts for Bitcoin dominance, as well as ADA USD. So all of that coming up right after our sponsor. Our sponsor for today's video is Zelda Stakepool. Zelda Stakepool is a Cardano stakepool based in Japan. They are doing very well this current epoch, sitting at over 100% lifetime luck. So if you're interested in a reliable stake pool to stake your ADA, be sure to check out the Zelda stake pool, ticker Z-E-L-D-A. Thank you so much to Zelda Stake Pool for sponsoring today's video. So to get things started, how IOHK will put developers in charge of oracles on Cardano. So recently, Charles Hoskinson has been talking a lot about DeFi. There's been a lot of talk regarding smart contracts and the implementation of Gogan on the network. So now as far as oracles, Cardano is intended to have a full suite to be able to cater to a wide variety of users. Now there are two ways that feed information into oracles. So either through a third party or directly by the network's users. So according to the announcement that we saw just a few days ago with the partnership with Wolfram Alpha, oracles have definitely been put into consideration. So now IOHK's plan for blockchain will require a stable and secure Oracle solution that can not only handle billions of users that are transacting on the network, but also hundreds of thousands of developers who are actually building on the platform. So something that these developers will need is going to be reliable data sources to receive data to be able to input into these smart contracts. So taking a look at what they're doing with these partnerships, now there are three aspects of establishing the foundations for oracles on Cardano. So namely, we're gonna have stake pool operators, the Singularity Net API, and Wolfram Alpha. So Singularity Net is actually another partnership that IOHK had made with Dr. Ben Gortzel. So lots of cool things as far as the people that they were working with. Of course, some of the top minds within the space are able to collaborate and bring value into the Cardano ecosystem. So now these oracles are only as good as the information that they provide. So if you think about a smart contract requiring information from the outside world, uh, one use case would be, let's say if you were to have the price data feeds for a specific stock, into your smart contract and you would have that execute based on the data within that oracle. The partnership with Wolfram Alpha is one of the most interesting that I've seen as of recent because it contains one of the largest sets of data in the world to operate on. So Wolfram Alpha actually powers both Apple, Siri, and Amazon Alexa assistants. And it's got deals with a whole bunch of other Fortune 500 companies within a wide spectrum of industries. So thinking about the amount of information that's available by having this data set accessible in an Oracle solution to use on the blockchain, I think it's gonna be very, very powerful for developers who are interested in implementing these things into their own smart contract. Now, the information provided by the Oracles need to have three key characteristics. So that's gonna be veracity, availability, and completeness. Veracity means that the information is verifiably truthful. Availability means that it's readily accessible and completeness means that it's available to be computed. So with all of these three characteristics meshing together, we've got a very coherent system that's able to transfer data from the outside world into these smart contracts written on the blockchain. Now, Hoskinson noted that the information fed to Cardano doesn't have to come from a central database. So stake pool operators, trusted servers, a federation of actors, and other third-party Oracle services like Chainlink can all be the sources. So they are working on a wide spectrum of utility and application with bringing data sets into these smart contract applications. But these partnerships, namely both Wolfram Alpha and AGI, are gonna be very interesting to see what they can do. Stake pool operators, they will actually be the ones to take queries written with AGI and Wolfram and plug them into different data sources. So stake pool operators definitely have 
quite the opportunity there as well because it's just another value added to the business of operating a stake pool. So very interesting to see that. I think 2021 is gonna be an amazing year to see what is to come with all of these partnerships. You know, they are pushing forward with this. And I know that the team at IOHK and all of their partners are working hard to bring all of these things to life. Now, Charles Hoskinson went on to further explain all DeFi apps built on Cardano will have a very easy turnkey way of querying information, operating on it, and being certain that the information is correct. So very important to see all of this. I know that they are thinking about so many different problems as it's related to blockchain. And I am sure that 2021 is going to be an amazing year as it comes to oracles on Cardano. Taking a look at some of the things we're seeing in regards to regulation, what we saw very recently was that the SEC is filing a lawsuit against Ripple, the parent company for XRP. So in regards to regulations for cryptocurrencies, I think this is definitely going to be in the forefront of people's minds as we move forward into the new year. Lack of stablecoin regulations could be dangerous, according to Charles Hoskinson. Now, as we talk about DeFi, you know, we were talking about oracles, a whole bunch of different use cases for blockchain technology. How do stablecoins actually fit into this? So Charles Hoskinson did give his thoughts about this in a recent AMA, saying that he's not worried at all about where the stablecoin regulation sits. And frankly, that if they regulate them like they do securities, that's not at all problematic, especially when you're talking about asset-backed stablecoins. It may soon become critical that crypto-centric businesses reassure their compliance to all state regulations, especially since the SEC and other regulators are coming hard at non-compliant projects and businesses. So definitely want to make sure that uh, as far as regulations are concerned, that we're very cautious and very aware of the ramifications of all these different projects that are building on these protocols and what it could mean should there be any type of malpractice in regards to regulations. So in my opinion, I think that Cardano has definitely taken this into consideration. I don't necessarily think that we should have any issues going forward with Cardano or ADA being considered an unregistered security. I just don't think that's the case, namely because it's going to be a truly decentralized cryptocurrency. I believe that in March of 2021, the D parameter will become zero. And at that point, the cryptocurrency is truly decentralized and similar to what we're seeing with Bitcoin. You know, it's censorship resistance, it's immutable, it's trustless. I think all of these different properties are gonna be very key as it comes to cryptocurrencies and their success. And I think that Cardano has all of these things going for it. Taking a look at some price charts here, I wanted to go ahead and share with you all the price chart for Bitcoin dominance here. We're taking a look at the weekly time frame with the price of Bitcoin breaking out to new all time highs. We're seeing the market just going bananas. You know, Bitcoin breaking past $25,000 on the 25th of December. I think that was quite the Christmas gift. But I uh, wanted to go ahead and give you all my thoughts on where we could potentially be heading with Bitcoin dominance and if this is inevitably going to lead to an altcoin cycle. So since the altcoin season at the end of 2017, the dominance that we saw doubled from 35% to 70%. So this is when Bitcoin had a big run up and then altcoins followed suit, really pumping hard against Bitcoin almost doubling their dominance against Bitcoin. So from here, this weekly candle, we can see that Bitcoin is going to retouch that top market cap dominance at about 72%. So we can see here this line of resistance, which was that previous high. We've definitely broken past this downward sloping line of resistance, and we are approaching this horizontal level at 72% for Bitcoin dominance. So will we see a little bit of resistance here at about that 72% level, seeing that it was a previous high in the past? We shall see, definitely keeping an eye on it. Of course, we know that Bitcoin is the leader of the market, so we're seeing right now a lot of the capital inflows into Bitcoin. What I'm anticipating, and of course not financial advice, just wanted to share with you guys my thoughts, think that we might see a little bit of resistance here at about 72%, and it would be very interesting to see if we're able to break above that to continue Bitcoin's rise, or if altcoins are going to begin to steal the show as Bitcoin begins to cool off. So keeping an eye on it, definitely will keep you all posted on what we're seeing there with Bitcoin dominance. And last up, for those of you all who have stayed till the very end, taking a look at the price chart for ADA USD, Looking like we're forming what seems to be almost a triple bottom or even an inverse head and shoulders. We can see 
left shoulder, head, and right shoulder. So an inverse head and shoulder, we could see the neckline potentially at about 17 cents, definitely some resistance up there. And as far as where we could potentially be heading in the near future, we're getting quite the hammer candle here on the daily. So definitely looking at that 17 cent level as the next point of resistance. And from there all the way up at that 18 cents. And then the next key psychological level from there is that 20 cent level. So guys, that is what we're looking at here in terms of these price charts here. Let me know what you guys think. Are you all accumulating ADA right now as we're seeing Bitcoin breaking past new all time highs? Or are you just simply stacking sats and chilling? Let me know down in the comment section. I would love to hear from you all. All right, everyone, that is what I have for you all here in this video today. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to drop a like for me before you go. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care.